Hello, my name is Michael, and today I'd like to demonstrate how you, as a corporation, or as an agency or service provider, can prepare layout documents for other users. For example, these users can be end users, colleagues, employees, business partners, or even translators. We will refer to these documents as templates. My aim is to prepare the templates in such a way that the users in the target group only have limited editing rights in the document. If you are a beginner in graphic design, you will soon understand how easy it is to edit complex documents. If you already know other layout programs, you will understand right away which new possibilities are offered to you by Viva Designer that up to now you haven't even thought of. With the help of what we call distributed publishing technology, you can ensure that the user can only edit certain text and image content without, for example, being able to change the whole layout, style sheets, or colors. In this way, you can ensure that the corporate design of the company is guaranteed and that the template may be edited by anyone without any knowledge of graphic design or any training. The distributed publishing technology is based on Viva Designer and works on the desktop for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and also with all modern web browsers. Now we'll start with a program presentation. First, I would like to create the template on the desktop, and so I start Viva Designer. For the first time, Viva Designer enables global, cross-platform, and web-based creation and editing of documents that meet the requirements and capabilities of both pros and beginners. Here, all the functions are available that are needed to construct and lay out documents. But, if you have already created documents in other layout programs, such as, for example, InDesign, you can open these in Viva Designer on the desktop or on the web. Edit your documents with everything a professional layout program includes. Optical alignment, table setting, style sheets, multilingual text and user interface, color management, transparency, anchored frames, optical preflight, line counter, smart guides, compound paths and shapes, runaround of text and paths, hyphenation, footnotes and endnotes, change tracking, spell checking, QR or barcodes, and much more. Finally, you can even import and edit the document again in InDesign. I have created my document completely in Viva Designer, and now I want to prepare this document as a template for the user. Imagine that you need to solve this task with your layout program. How could this work? To protect certain areas of a document, most layout programs provide two basic functions, locking or protection of objects and layers. Now I select the objects required, and in the object menu I choose the commands protection and or lock. Unfortunately, this isn't a solution, as every user who opens the document with a program can cancel this protection. As an alternative, you could create a new layer in the layout program, move the objects to this layer, and then lock the layer. I will demonstrate this briefly for the required objects. Now I can lock the layer. Unfortunately, this also isn't a solution, as every user who opens the document with a program can cancel this protection with a single mouse click. To prevent this from happening, Viva Designer provides three additional protective mechanisms. First, individual password protection of layers. Second, individual password protection of master pages, which in Viva Designer are called alias pages. And third, individual reduction of the function range for every single template. Let's first of all take a look at the layers. The idea of placing objects on a separate layer is in principle a very good one. In Viva Designer, you can now give this layer a password. Only the user who knows the password can then unlock the layer. Under certain circumstances, you could even do without protecting the layers with passwords altogether, but we will come back to this later. In the second step, you can also protect master pages with a password. In this way, you can give a user an empty 4, 8, or 12 page document in which the user can create his own layout on the basis of predefined master pages without being able to change the master pages themselves. Now we still have the problem that a beginner would be completely overwhelmed by the many possibilities offered by the program. Therefore, as a third step, I define which functions will be available to the user in this special template. 
To do this, I choose the command Preferences in the Edit menu. The Distributed Publishing module provides the Access Rights option in the Preferences. In this case, I allow the user to save the template under the same or another name and to import images. However, he is not allowed to create, edit, or change the document settings, preferences, colors, or style sheets. He is allowed to print the template on his local printer, but not in high resolution. And he is not allowed to export the template, for example as a PDF or a PostScript file. The user is not allowed to create his own objects, but he is allowed to resize existing objects, for example to adapt the object height to the text content. He doesn't need to manage pages, as the document only has a few pages, and no new pages should be added. He should just be able to edit text and images on the layers that are unlocked for him. Furthermore, the user doesn't need any palettes for tools and navigation. And he also shouldn't choose any typographic options, as he should only use the style sheets that are available. In this example, we can also do without the protection of the second layer if we deactivate the layer palette, so that the user doesn't have any possibility of changing layers. If, for example, during a translation several layers must be displayed, a password protection would be necessary. I will also deactivate the Assignments palette with which several users in a team can work at the same time on one document. For more information and videos about working in a team, please have a look at our website. I will also deactivate the Page palette and the Color palette. The user does need the palettes for text editing like Style Sheets, Search and Replace, Spell Check, Change Tracking, and so on. Finally, I will deactivate the Trapping palette and save my settings for this document with a password. I now confirm my entries, and for security's sake, I save the template with another name. Now you can choose whether you will provide the document to the user on the desktop or in the web browser. If the user will work in the web browser, you don't need to apply a password. The function set can be applied on a role basis using a web application for the length of the session. This means that if a user from the marketing group opens the template in the browser, he will have different editing rights assigned to him than when a user in the graphic designers group opens the template. On the desktop, however, there are only two roles, the users who know the password and those who don't. But what should the users now use to edit the template? Here you have several possibilities. You can provide the user with a complimentary free edition of Viva Designer by putting a download link to it on your website. This version offers no options for PDF export, but also no hyphenation, spell checking, or change tracking. Therefore, this variation is only suitable for relatively simple cards, brochures, or posters. Alternatively, the user can buy a full version or rent it for a limited period. If this is too complicated, as a service provider, you can give your customer a full version directly. For this case, there are special licenses. Alternatively, you can make the template available on the web. For the time being, we'll stay on the desktop, as the basic functional behavior of the program on the desktop and the web is identical. Now we'll open the template again to see if our settings are all correct and that we haven't forgotten anything. As you can see, only those objects that are on the unprotected layer are available for editing. You can enter text and move and scale images interactively. The menu has also become very clear. The options that we blocked are not simply grayed out, but have completely disappeared, so that even a beginner will find it easy to move around the program. Now you can only format the text with the available style sheets. By the way, you can also visualize style sheets in Viva Designer. If you choose this option, the paragraphs are displayed with a colored background. Text without a colored background has not been assigned a style sheet. In this way, we can check very quickly and effectively how well someone has worked. 
Since Viva Designer's text functionality supports every language and text writing direction in the world, it is basically irrelevant in which country the template is edited. There are, however, two problems to be solved. First, the user interface language, and second, the names for style sheets and colors. However, even for these problems, Viva Designer has an amazingly simple solution. The user can change the program language at any time. If Viva Designer is used in a web application, the program language may already be predefined through the user data. In our example, I'll change the language manually. If the template is to be edited or translated in different countries, the choice of the style sheet names is a huge problem. In my example, I have created style sheets for characters and paragraphs. In this example, if the program language is changed, the names of colors and style sheets are changed too. How can the program translate these names automatically? The answer is relatively simple. When you define style sheets in Viva Designer, you have the choice of giving the style sheet a name of your own, or of choosing predefined names such as body text, headline numbering, and so on. These style sheet names are displayed in square brackets and are translated automatically when the program language is changed. The benefit? As the creator of the template, you don't have to worry anymore about where in the world the template will be used. The user recognizes the meaning and purpose of the style sheet immediately from the translation and can apply it accordingly. One major issue with web applications is the entry of special characters. Special characters may be symbols or even special space or break characters. As a professional typesetting program, Viva Designer offers all special characters both on the desktop and in the web. The context menu gives me further options for inserting special characters. With change tracking, you can check which changes the user has made in the document. Change tracking shows both newly inserted and deleted text, as well as formatting changes. The changes are saved with the user's name as well as the time. Whether you accept the user's changes or not remains your own decision in every case. With the Notes function, users can enter individual information or instructions in the text for any object. Such notes are ideal for proofing and correction purposes. All notes are documented with their creation and modification time and show the name of the user who last edited the note. If the user is allowed to edit images, it must also be ensured that the images used can be printed later. The user may not simply enlarge every picture as he wishes. To prevent this, Viva Designer provides a visual pre-flight if you define the image resolution and the tolerance for images in the preferences. To be able to make these settings, I must first of all enable the access rights for the document. In this example, the minimum resolution is 300 ppi and the tolerance 20%. This means that a color image should have at least 300 pixels per inch. Due to the tolerance of 20%, the image is still printable with a resolution of at least 240 ppi. If a user scales the image in a template, a yellow frame appears when the image is in the tolerance range, and a red frame appears when the scaling has exceeded the tolerance and the image is no longer printable. If the image shows no frame, the minimum resolution is guaranteed. This logic can easily be explained to every user. A further challenge for layout programs lies in font management. Specifically, the question is how to deliver fonts without an installation by the user being necessary. Viva Designer offers a simple but equally unique solution to this problem. All fonts used can be embedded in the template. For this, you just have to choose one option in the preferences. At the same time, additional fonts can be embedded if this option needs to be supplied to the user. Equally unique is the option to deactivate unused fonts. This option is part of the Viva corporate publishing concept and, for example, ensures that a user may only choose those fonts that are embedded in the document 
and correspond to the corporate design of the company. Embedding the font also means that when the document is edited in the web browser, a font never needs to be installed on a server, as the document already contains all the necessary elements. This goes for the desktop too, of course. A further highlight with Viva Designer is represented by the so-called virtual drives. Normally, you open and save your documents on local drives or on network drives. With virtual drives, you can create links to databases or web drives, and open and save documents directly from and in a database. With an additional option, you can even block access to physical drives and force the user to edit documents exclusively within the database. When opening and saving, all other drives are no longer available in the dialog or cannot be selected. In this way, local copies of documents or templates can be prevented. This option is particularly interesting for software suppliers or corporations who want to achieve certain workflows or who have high security requirements. A further benefit is that users can work online as well as offline and yet still have access to the same templates. Finally, let's take a look at the document in the Viva Designer Web Edition. What do you still have to do to edit the document in the browser? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We cannot emphasize enough that you only need one single template, which you can use both on the desktop and also on the web, without any conversion, changes in layout or design, tagging, or additional work. Since there is practically no difference between the desktop and web editions, Viva Designer is also shown in the browser with the same options. Some users are uncomfortable using an application with a desktop user interface in the browser. Therefore, Viva Designer on Windows and Linux offers the possibility of switching to a so-called neutral interface design. If you have switched the interface design, a user will no longer recognize on which operating system the program is running. The menus have a different appearance and in this mode offer a smaller function range by default. We can largely do without the usage of palettes, as important functions such as style sheets, notes, insert special characters, and search are already displayed. Now we'll open the template in the Viva Designer Web Edition. For this purpose, we will use what we call Viva Cloud. The Viva Cloud is a Media Asset Management, MAM for short with which files of any type can be saved, shared, and managed in the Internet. For more information and videos about Viva Cloud, please have a look at our website. I have already saved the document in the Viva Cloud, and I'll open it now in the browser. I don't need any plugin like Flash or Java, just an HTML5 compatible browser. Here I can use any browser such as Firefox, Google Chrome, Microsoft Internet Explorer, or Edge, or Apple Safari. After I have opened it, the document is displayed in Viva Designer. For editing, I have predefined the neutral Viva interface on the server. I can now apply all the options that I can also apply on the desktop, as I am working in exactly the same program. I hope that I have been able to give you good insight into the benefits of the Viva technologies and programs. In conclusion, we can say that Viva Designer unites the technologies and concepts of desktop publishing, web publishing, distributed publishing, team publishing, and corporate publishing in just one single program. If you have any questions, I recommend you take a look at the informative videos, data sheets, and brochures on our website. Additionally, our sales and support team is available for any questions you may have. Send us an email or give us a call. You will find the contact data on our website. We look forward to hearing from you. Many thanks for your time. See you again soon.